What's up guys and welcome to a brand new video. So today we're going to be doing a video very similar to one we did a couple weeks ago since we got really good feedback and we wanted to try it out again. And to help me out today I have my good friend Heisman. Now most of you guys know me from Heisman's channel so he doesn't need much of an introduction. But for those of you who don't know Heisman he's a Lee Sin main with over 160k subs. So I'll leave his channel in the description below. And I wanted his help with this video because he's been hard stuck diamond for a few seasons now. Which many consider to be high elo so I figured he would be perfect for this video. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a, I'm a hard stuck diamond three player. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be a good or a bad thing the way Nasty phrased it, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess I've been playing this game a while. I've been around in this in diamonds for like three and a half seasons now. So I might not be a challenger player, but I guess I have experience in the top one percent, or in this case, I guess I'm in the top point four percent now. So yeah, but you guys probably already know me. All right, to kick things off here, I wanted to talk about macro play. And that's because the macro play, the shot calling, the decision making difference between high elo and low elo is so insanely different. And I think in higher elos, players just have this kind of like natural ability to make the correct calls. And I think that just comes with playing a lot, I guess, and understanding everything about the game. So what do you think about that? I think there's almost no shot calling in low elo. Like pretty much like low elo, it's pretty much just like group. That's that's like all people will call out. It's like group, baron, dragon, like rotations being called out, at least not often. Whereas in high elo, you know, people are making call outs that are more specific to the situation. Like, oh, we should rotate bot now. We should have a 1-3-1. One, one. We should have, you know, our jack split top lane because people kind of recognize where the strengths are in your, um, you know, on your team. Yeah, I would say the biggest difference is that there's more shot calling in general. And when they do shot call, it's a lot more specific and they know what they're doing. So that's a that's absolutely a big difference between the two elos. Yep. And that's going to bring me on to the second thing that differentiates low elo from high elo. And it goes hand in hand with what you just said, but it's basically people not recognizing win conditions and not recognizing like when they have an advantage in the game. You could be up 10 0 with like a Malphite and Oriana, but people don't know to group in and team fight in that circumstance. For example, when you're in high elo and you have a win condition that is clearly opening up, people will always, you know, talk about it in the team chat or like, you know, everyone just knows like this is what we should do in this situation. When you're in low elo, it's just chaos. Like you could be up 10k gold, but you're doing the exact same thing that you were doing when the game was even. Like people don't start to play their advantages properly. Like it's just like Let's see if we're able to win now that we have a gold lead. It's not like people are actually looking to end the games, you know, using that gold advantage. So I just think it's people not really coming. I think it just comes down to people not really recognizing their advantages and what their win condition is. Yeah, and on top of that, it's not even the fact that they, they can't recognize it, but they don't understand how important it is. You know, when I'm in lower, lower elos, when I'm playing on my Smurf accounts or whatnot, it seems like everybody's kind of just doing their own thing. They're just playing the game without putting too much thought and group effort into it. Or like just, I think it was yesterday actually, I was playing a game and we're really far behind and everybody's just trying to be productive in the chat saying, what's our win condition? What do we have to do to get back into this game? How do we win this game? So just the idea of a win condition isn't really discussed in lower elos, where in higher elos it's recognized, it's discussed, and people try to recognize it so that they can win the game, I guess. Another big difference that I want to touch on briefly goes hand in hand with macro play, and that is micro play. There really isn't too much to say aside from the fact that Players who are higher elo tend to have more time invested into the game, and as a result, their mechanics and microplay are increasingly better. I'll leave it at that though, because this topic is pretty self-explanatory, but I think it definitely deserved a spot on this list. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about CSing. So this is obviously something that every elo has to do, but the lower elos tend to not do this as well. And I just wanted to emphasize on how important CSing is. So what are your general thoughts on CS? I think like the big thing is like it's not only the last hitting timing like that it's a it's a combination of a bunch of factors that makes lower elos not cs as well the first one being like i said just people not knowing how to last hit properly but it also is because of other reasons like people want to fight constantly in lower elos like people are very antsy to try and win the game there's not as much patience um yeah people are just very antsy and they're always looking to fight and just that naturally makes you not get as much cs because you're not focusing on farming quite as much so i just think people like don't realize that minions are as important as kills 
yeah just to put this things yeah, yeah just just to put this in a little bit more simpler terms i i don't want to don't count me on this because i don't know the exact numbers but i'm pretty sure it's around 15 to 20 cs is the same amount of gold equivalent to a kill so if you just think about it that way getting getting a cs advantage is almost just as good as getting a solo kill so I just wanted to really emphasize on that. And I think what I'm trying to say here is learn to CS in lower ELOs and it'll, it'll just really help out. All right. So the next point I want to make about the difference between low and high ELO is the builds. People in low ELO kind of just build whatever. They, they build what, they're, what they always build on their specific champion. And yes, I know there's some people that do know how to build according to the situation. But in high ELO, the build is entirely coming down to what the circumstance is. Whereas in low ELO... More often than not, people are just building what they think they should be building because of the champion that they're playing. There are some games where you're not going to be building the items that you normally build just because the circumstances don't make that the right build. Like, you know, if I'm playing Lee Sin, sometimes I'll rush Black Lever second item, sometimes I'll rush Hex Drinker, sometimes I'll rush a, a Ninja Tabby or something. It depends on the circumstances. There's not one set build that you should be building. And I feel like in lower elos, People don't really know what they should be building. They just kind of build what they are used to building. Yeah, whenever I'm playing in lower elos and I, I'm looking at the builds, it seems like everybody's just going off of the best win rate build or they're going off of recommended and they're not really expanding out of outside of that, which can be good, you know? Like, you don't want to see your gen building proto belt because he's experimenting or something like that. It's more of, like, additional knowledge, I guess. Like, if you're against a team that's heavy AD, you should be building armor. If you're playing against a team that's heavy uh ability power then you should be building a magic resist and i guess this sounds like common sense but honestly for some people in lower elos this doesn't really click for them and it just really needs to be addressed and i think that that's a really big difference between the two elos then the people in low elo right now that are thinking that's not true i always know when to build armor i always know when to build mr it's it's not as simple as like build armor build mr it's which items should you build sometimes if you're sometimes it's a good time to build Randuin's Omen and not Dead Man's Plate, just because you're always used to building Dead Man's Plate on Lee Sin. Sometimes Randuin's Omen makes more sense. Maybe they have a lot of attack speed, or maybe they have a lot of crit, or maybe you need maybe you're the main engage, so you need the extra active item to get the slow out. I mean, it's 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 not as simple as MR armor. It's it goes a lot deeper than that. Now this next point I feel like goes hand in hand with players just being narrow minded or I guess stubborn in a sense. And that is lower elo players don't know when the right time to pick certain champions are, whereas in higher elos they kind of know when are the best situations to pick these champions. I'm not going to say this one I'm quite as in agreement with, not because I don't agree with your first point, but because I think, at least in my elo, people are still idiots about what they pick. <laughs> like, I feel like people in my elo still will pick champions that don't really make sense, but I will agree that a larger majority of players are thinking about what champions make sense to pick in certain situations. I think the point to be made here isn't that all players do it, it's just that a larger majority of players do it. Um, so yeah, absolutely, there's going to be a lot more um, thought and just overall strategy that goes into champion select and higher elo. Yeah, and what I'm trying to say here is that this isn't the case all the time uh, for lower elos versus higher elos. It's just more common in higher elos. And even in, like, Diamond Masters Challenger, you still see one-tricks, you know? There's still going to be those Teemo one-tricks that always pick Teemo, no matter what the team comp uh, needs. But it is just more common that in higher elos, you'll see somebody, you know, if they have a team that really works with team fighting, they'll pick that Orianna, you know? Or if somebody needs a split pusher, they'll pick a Cassidy or a Fizz in the mid lane, you know? It just kind of works like that. All right, so the next point about the difference between low and high elo is going to be how people snowball in games and just recognizing the opportunity to snowball. In lower elo, if you get a kill on someone, you might not even think to go ahead and get that lane snowballed. In higher elo, though, if you get behind, you're going to stay behind because they're going to make sure that they're using the advantage that they just built on you. It's not just recognizing that you can snowball, but it's actually executing it. For example, when you go for a tower dive on your 2-0 top laner, in higher elo, I will see the tower juggling be executed a lot better than in lower elo. I just think people understand, you know, how where the where the matchups are and where the good matchups are and how to actually start to snowball that lane. Yeah, and I like what you said about how it's not just understanding that you can snowball, it's actually executing it. So you have to be able to get a lead and then push that advantage to get even more. And I feel like in higher elos, kills just mean so much more. Like, in a lower elo game, 10 kill difference, 15 kill difference, you know, extreme cases, 20 kill difference. I still feel like I'm in that game. 
whereas in, in higher elos in my games right now, if I'm behind 10 to 15 kills, I'm like, wow, we're like really far behind and we're going to need like a major comeback to try to win this one. And yeah, it's just because it's just because people, when they get these kills, they know how to get their the small <clears> advantages <throat> after that. You know, if mid lane gets a solo kill, they know how to go back, get like an extra Dorans or something. With that 400 gold lead, they're going to try to get another kill. It's it's kind of those small advantages. Another minor difference that can go a long ways is the fact that higher elo players will tend to almost always have the correct runes and masteries. Runes and masteries are just such a basic core uh, aspect of the game, and not many people put thought into it, but it can really make a big difference if you have the right runes and masteries compared to the wrong ones. I don't really have a whole lot to add to that. I think that's that's pretty, you know, straightforward. People aren't using the right runes and masteries more often than not in lower elo than higher elo. I don't think there's a whole lot to add to that. So, yeah, basically, use the right runes and masteries. You have a better chance of winning the game, plain and simple. So, with that, we'll go into the next one. All right. So the next point that I want to bring up is something that definitely rings true with myself, and that's just how players act about their own play. When I was in lower elo, I always thought I deserve to be higher but when I got to higher elo I think that I deserve where I am where I'm diamond three player like I don't think I should be higher and so I think people are just more like you know, they have a, like a lot more pride issues I guess you could say in lower elos because they want to be higher elo whereas once you get to higher elo I feel like more players are able to say hey you know what that, that was just me being stupid. That was me just being bad. Whereas in lower ELO, people seem to not want to admit their mistakes quite as frequent. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of people in Diamond that are the exact opposite of what I just said. But I think the strong majority of players definitely are willing to admit to their own mistakes and admit that, you know, they're not the best player in the world. Yeah, I think this is kind of just like a mindset. And I think it comes along with the experience in the game. You know, when you're in gold, plat, whatever you are, it's very easy to say, hey, I deserve this elo or I deserve this rank, but you don't really know until you experience it. So like when I was when I was climbing earlier this season, I kept thinking to myself, man, I deserve challenger. I deserve challenger. I can get challenger. Once I got to a challenger MMR and I started playing against these other support players and I was getting absolutely stomped, I kind of came to this understanding like, OK, I have work to improve on like I still need to work on a few things before I deserve Challenger. So I think it comes along with the experience. And as you climb, as you experience other players, other ranks, then you'll get a feel of where you belong. But until then, I don't think it's fair to, and for lower elos to claim that they deserve higher ranks. So, yeah. All right. So the last point I want to make, and this one's a little bit less specific, but I think that in lower elo, people tend to give up silly one-for-one -one trades more often than they do in higher elo. If you're six and zero and you're just absolutely destroying your lane opponent, you don't need to be taking one for one trades ever. Like you're going to be giving up shutdown. They're not worth nearly as much gold. And on top of that, if it's during like a team fight and you and you chase and like flash offensively in to get a kill because you're greedy and then you die, you're setting up your team for the defeat because you going down one for one with the zero and six person on their team or whatever is just a horrible trade. You don't always need to go for the kills. I guess is the point I'm trying to make. And these one for one trades that I see in lower elo are really bad. And so that's one difference that I think people start to learn in higher elo. I think a really good way to put this is that higher elo players tend to understand their importance to their team. You know, so the carries understand that they need to stay alive. And like you said, flashing forward for these one-for-one -one trades are not going to be worth. And in higher elos, you'll see that they understand that and that they're more willing to stay back, I guess. Um, not to say that they play passive, but they won't be going and putting themselves in a bad situation because right. they understand they need to live. And I think that the mm -hmm. same could be said for, you know, like support champions or something. Like they understand that their importance, like a Thresh, you know, might dive in and, and get a bunch of kills for his team and die in the process. So it's kind of just knowing your role in the team, I guess, and understanding how important you are to team fights and how you want to play well, it out. Now that you bring up supports, that's another, like, that goes hand-in-hand -hand with what I'm saying. It's like supports think that, like, they're not worth gold in low elo or something. Like, oh, I'm auto-filled support. It's okay if I go 0 and 10. Like, I'm support, dude. No, like, if you go 0 and 10 on mid or support, you're giving up the same amount of gold to the other team. And I think in higher elo, people don't just, like, go and int just because they're on a support champion, which is a kind of ha kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with what I was saying. It's just people not understanding their worth to the team. All right, all right, all right. I guess I, I see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to tell me that I need to stop inting when I play support when I do it with you. And I understand that. And with that being said, I think this video is going to come to an end. 
I'm sure this could go without being said, but make sure you guys go check out Heisman. His link will be in the description. If you haven't already, he's an insanely good YouTuber, and I just want to give a huge shout out to him for helping me out with this video. So thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.